we are teaching the most beautiful lesson that can be taught to man. We are teaching the essence of God. God is love. God has power or energy, but God is love. If you ever discover what love is, you will discover God. And, and so uh, it is the greatest lesson. It is the greatest lesson possible to study. It's the greatest lack on planet Earth is love. And so we just trust that God will anoint these blessings. I get rebukings quite often, and the fruit of one rebuke is this teaching. One little lady walked up to me in California and said, you men are always talking on faith, why don't you talk on love? And I said, thank you. <laughs> she says, you have all those teaching syllabus down there on faith. I said, why don't you have one on love? I said, thank you. We got it. And, and so, let's do it. A love is joy flowing. Oh, this is not in your book. You have to write it down. <laughs> love is peace, resting. Love is patience, waiting. Love is kindness, sensitive to loved ones and friends, to others. Love is goodness, making allowances and sacrifices for friends and loved ones. Love is faithfulness, staying constant in all of our activities of life. Love is gentleness, yielding to others to bless them. Love is self-control, triumph, triumphing over, over selfish inclinations and desires. So we find that love is really all. I feel that the Lord gave me these words on page five. Uh, I never remember reading them any place. That love is like an angel with one wing. Now, I've never heard any, of any one-winged angels. But love is like an angel with one wing. It just takes two angels to fly. And if you think you have love and you haven't shared it, you don't have any. Love is a dead commodity until shared. The only way that God continues to be love, he's sharing all the time. And also creating. Love creates and hate destroys. And when, when one ceases to create, he's left behind love to bring into being when these lovely ladies bring in being new dishes at the table for that husband, new delights. It's love and expression, you see. It's love that's living, you see. So love is like an angel. The poor little angel only has one wing. He can't go anywhere till he hooks up with another angel. And so until we have love flowing in our hearts, we're a one-winged angel going nowhere. But when we hook up with somebody else, we've got both wings going. And that's when we can really fly for God. Can you say amen? Man likes inanimate things. The word likes is in uppercase. But man loves living things. We should be very careful about saying that we, we love that or that when it cannot reciprocate. We don't love until it has the power of coming back at us because that's what love, love is always two ways. God doesn't love the stars. They can't reciprocate. I know he appreciates them and thinks they're beautiful because he made them, but he don't love them because they can't reciprocate to him. God doesn't love the sun. God doesn't love the waters of the sea, but God loves you because you have all the power of being like God and reciprocating love back to him. Love is alive. Can you say amen? amen. Some secrets, page six, 
predate man. Earth's greatest secret is love. We know so little about it. For example, man with his scientific research can reach out to the extremes of the universe with knowledge and perception that a few years ago was unbelievable. Yet that same man that can do that is not able to fathom many of the secrets of God, such as love and, and joy and peace. It's very remarkable that a man can be such a success in certain areas and so dead in other areas. One of Earth's greatest secrets, seemingly hidden from the eyes of man, is now made manifest. This secret is related to the essence of God. What is God? Who is God? So many have sought to find God, but not in the path of love, and so they miss Him. They seek Him in the path of omnipotence, with all power and omniscience, and all knowledge and omnipresence, being everywhere. Those are great paths, but they won't lead you to the heart of God because God is love. And so we have to go down the right road to find Him. Jehovah God, who is the creator, God is a God of love. In its purest manifestation, you ought to make a line under that purest manifestation. There are degrees of love, I presume, in every human breast. But in its purest manifestation, you get back to deity. Because God loves the unlovable, the unlovely. God lifts up those that are not appreciative of being lifted up. God gives rain upon the just and the unjust, the Bible says. Upon the revelation of this purest love, we come to the knowledge of the mighty God. That when it comes revealed to us, the purest form of love, then we find ourselves in the presence of the creator of all things. Our world is now ready to know, I believe, to appreciate to absorb, to become part of this unbounded, unmeasured affection and care that only God can give. And in giving it to us, we reciprocate this love to others. Love is a battle. The devil is a personification of hate and, and, and strife. And, and so uh, when we get to God, we get the opposite of that. And some of us are in between. We're leaning toward God and still have some of the manifestation of the flesh. God wants us to clean up our act amen. and be like God. Can you say amen? amen? All you've got to do is when you make a big decision or you do something, says, is this the same thing Jesus would have done? <laughs> is this the way Jesus would do it? And if it's the way Jesus would do it, it'll come from the heart of God. You believe it? All right. Our world is ready. I believe that. To appreciate and to absorb, to come a part of this unbounded, unmeasured affection. In 1 John 4 and 8, it says, He that loveth, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. Now that is a firm, strong statement. Anyone not abiding in love just doesn't know God. Anyone that hates doesn't know God. It don't matter where the hate is located. We have a world brimming full of hate, running over with hate. In the neighborhoods, in the business, in the workplace, in the family, the devil is generating hate by the bushel basketful, and some of us are eating more than our share of it. Hate is not of God. Fighting back against people who say things about you is not of God. Getting hurt because somebody says something is not of God. It's not what people think of us because they're like the wind. They change every few hours. My son Peter was telling me a few moments ago that they were told by the pilots 
coming back from Honolulu that when they touched San Francisco, they would have a 140 mile an hour tailwind that would push them toward Chicago. They got into Chicago about 40 minutes late because they hit a 150 mile wind right on the nose with that great big, biggest plane in the world. You say, what's the difference? Winds, winds don't ask your cooperation and winds don't care which way they flow from. They can flow from one direction one minute and turn right around and flow right straight back the other way and they don't ask your permission about it. So there are forces in this world that are contrary, but it's useless to fight them. I mean, it's better to love. Can you say amen? He that loveth not knoweth not God. Now that's just a strong statement there that we have to look, live with. He says, for God is love. That makes it one of the greatest verses in the Bible because it identifies the essence of God, what God is on the inside. The word love is mentioned 304 times in the English Bible. That means that God wants you to, uh, you know, know something about it. He didn't use it just once, but when he uses anything hundreds of times, it means he wants you to know what it is. Love is a word not fully definable by human tongue. We just simply don't have enough adjectives to get around to it. Not only enough, but deep enough. They fall, they, they fall short of the true meaning. And so they, 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 they come upon, a, upon an undefinable essence, and it's called love. Love is life, and life is a mystery. It's still a mystery. Doctors can describe the mystery better than anybody else and tell you how big a mystery life truly is. But love is life's greatest secret. If we could only get love out into the open, get it talked about, there are news commentators that are on the air for years and never use the word one time. They use hate all the time. But they don't ever get around to finding anything loving or lovable on this earth. And they're wrong. I was in the Oval Office in, in Washington a few years ago talking with the president. And he said, we can do 500 good things in this city. And the press won't say one word about it. But said, let us do one bad thing. And it makes headlines all over the world. You say, why? They didn't originate in love. Or they'd have been telling the good things also. And in your own life, if you're so pleased when you can tell something dirty, and if something good happens, you're not interested in it at all. You're getting your life source in the wrong place. The life source of God is love. And God wants us to love love, understand love, because in understanding love, you understand God. When you say, I just can't forgive you, that means you don't know God in that area. You just don't, you don't know God in that area. Or you would be able to forgive them because God forgives. God not only forgives, God forgets. You sure are loud today. Could you say amen together or not? Amen. That's not very good, but anyway, the uh, best you can do, I think. Love can be likened to a diamond. The finished and completed diamond has 58 faucets, little faces on it. It emits light 58 different ways. Any direction that, that this light hits it, it comes out in different ways. It is impossible to know where the light enters and where it departs. It just goes in and out of there so many ways. Love emits God in every motion of energy. That's what love does. The ingredients of love are like electricity. We learn how to use it and find it impossible to define. In a college class, one day the professor said, is there someone here that would give me a definition of 
the electricity please. And one young student put up his hand real quick. The professor, professor said, would you kindly stand? And he stood up and said, would you give the class a definition of electricity? He looked at the professor and says, well, I just forgot. He said, that's a great pity because the only man that ever knew just forgot. <laughs> we can use the love of God and we can't define it. You may not be able to define how a black cow eats green grass, gives white milk and yellow butter, but it sure is good. And I'm sure that we're not going to stop drinking the milk and enjoying the butter because we can't get the definition in there. So let's move toward God and the only highway to go is love. Learn love. And then you'll be on the highway toward God. If a person fully comprehended love, he would possess a full knowledge of God. If he had a full comprehension of love, then he would have a full knowledge of God. And the men of the Word who had the, the greatest knowledge of God, the greatest revelation of God, are men of great compassion like God. Stephen's one of the most beautiful characters in the Bible. He flowed with that divine essence called love. You'd have to study him and study him and study him to see it flowing out from him. And God would like to take all of us and for us to submit ourselves to the God-likeness of Jesus Christ and that we should increase in love. And if you're saying, well, I don't know what love is, uh, if you'll stick with us in these lessons, we're going to identify love as, if you've, as you have never heard it before in your lives. Because I want to be more love-like. We often say God-like. Change it to the earth down here. More love-like. We could revolutionize a community if beginning... Tomorrow, every one of us tried to do something nice for a neighbor. Of course, a lot of them would die because they'd be so surprised they'd just fall over dead. You've never done anything for them yet. What is divine love? Love is an expression, but love is never dormant. Love never sleeps. Love is an expression of energy. Love is not an idea. It's just not. Love is not a word. I kind of get weary in our modern life, especially with preachers that every time I meet them, they say, I love you, and I want to hold my hand out. I say, well, okay, go ahead. Because the lips didn't do anything. First thing you know, we can be an artificial component that we're not related at all to the original. And we shouldn't be saying, I love you. You turn around and you said, you see that crazy dress she is wearing today? It don't fit her complexion. She has her own opinion about that, which might be better than your opinion. Some of you wouldn't like the way a zebra looks, but God liked it all right. He made it. <laughs> love is an active expression. Love is a representation coming up out of our inner being, out of our, out of our world life of thinking and feeling, out of our solical parts, born in our spiritual parts, expressing itself in our solical and physical parts. It's a representation of what you are deep down on the inside that tells the whole story. Love is an offspring of the mind. Crazy people don't know how to love. They will hit the very person who cares for them the most. 
they will knock around the person that's serving them the best. And so we need a mind. Love is an offspring of mind. God is the great mind. Christ is the offspring of that mind. You say, how do you know? Because John 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the same in the beginning with God. So Christ is called the Word, and the Word is an expression of a thought. And so we know that he is the offspring of God in love. And he demonstrates that. Love is a word. It is one of more than a million English spoken words. Love is the most confusion of that million words. All languages are impoverished in definitions and in reality of that word. Everything has a heart. At the heart of the universe is a person. And that name is love. That's great to my mind, to my thinking. Everything has a heart when you get to the center of it. And at the heart of the whole universe is a person. And his name is love. And if you want to go to the heart of the universe, you don't go to hate. And you don't go to dislike. And you don't really go to material things. You go to a living person. Love is a noun in the Greek agape. It denotes a person. Love is a verb, agapao. It describes itself. Love is a journey, but love is never a destination. You don't ever get there with love. You're always on the road. Love is a destination. Love is only known by the thoughts and actions it prompts. You just cannot know love any other way. You understand love by what comes flowing out from it. If, if, if it's a bruise and a hurt that comes, it's not coming from the source of love. If it's kindness and graciousness and peace and and these beautiful things, it has an essence there of God. And we call that love. The great secret of love is that it seeks the welfare and the benefit of the unlovable. Now, we didn't say your best friend because that's easy. Jesus said to love your best friend. But it's not easy to love the unlovable. And, of course, that's what we were as sinners. We were, as sinners, we were the unlovable. And, and God loved us when we did not love ourselves nor love him. But he loved us to manifest himself to us. And through that manifestation, we can be like God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever receiveth him or believes upon him with an active living decision that person has eternal life. So love is the source of the greatest thing earth will ever know. It is the source of eternal life. And you cannot get to God any other way. There are no mechanisms. You're calling on your knees up and down that place. They will not get you to God. How do you get to God? Through one direct source that the manifestation of the creator of the universe is love. He revealed this love in the offering of his only begotten son. Now, if you want to produce love, you start giving of your very best and your chiefest, and, you know, then that's the demonstration of love. That whosoever accepts him, believes in him, receives him, then that person has eternal life. So eternal life flows to us through the medium of love. And that means when you come to an altar and you receive Christ into your heart, immediately there should be unusual manifestations within you. And we call those manifestations love. And those manifestations should reveal joy. <laughs> I don't believe you can be full of love with a long face. I think a long, miserable face reveals a hurt inside. And what God does when he comes inside of us, he heals the hurts. 
And if your hurts have not been healed, you haven't quite got close enough to the stove full of fire called love. It'll warm you up. 